Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Tuesday, the 12th of September. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer, even prayer on Tuesday from the Church of England. You'll find the words in the eponymously titled book in the section Morning Evening Prayer, Ordinary Time, Evening Prayer on Tuesday. Online at the Church's website, Arima's Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You're welcome to join me in the building, eight and six most days, or by Zoom, code on the Blind Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of mercy and truth, O God, will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm we need this evening, numbers 9 and 10, you will find them at the back of the book. Psalm 9 and Psalm 10. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will make music to your name, O Most High. When my name is driven back, they stumble and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on your throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name for ever and ever. The enemy was utterly laid waste. You uprooted their cities, their very memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure for ever. He has made fast his throne for judgment. For he shall rule the world with righteousness and govern the peoples with equity. Then will the Lord be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in the time of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare among the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood has remembered them. He did not forget the cry of the oppressed. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider the trouble I suffer from those who hate me, you that lift me up from the gates of death. That I may tell all your praises in the gates of the city of Zion and rejoice in your salvation. The nations shall return to the land of darkness. Sorry. The nations shall sink into the pit <clears throat> of their making, and in the snare which they set will their own foot be taken. The Lord makes himself known by his acts of justice. The wicked are snared in the works of their own hands. They shall return to the land of darkness, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, and let not mortals have the upper hand. Let the nations... Be judged before your face. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but mortal. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Why stand so far off, O Lord? Why hide yourself in time of trouble? The wicked in their pride persecute the poor. Let them be caught in the schemes they have devised. The wicked boast of their heart's desire. 
the covetous curse revile the Lord. The wicked in their arrogance say God will not avenge it. In all their scheming God counts for nothing. They are stubborn in all their ways, for your judgments are far above out of their sight. They scoff at all their enemies. Sorry, adversaries. They say in their hearts, I shall not be shaken. No harm shall ever happen to me. Their mouth is full of cursing, deceit and fraud. Under their tongue lie mischief and wrong. They lurk in the outskirts and in dark alleys. They murder the innocent. Their eyes are ever watching for the helpless. They lie in wait like a lion in his den. <clears throat> they lie in wait to seize the poor. They seize the poor when they get them into their net. The innocent are broken and humbled before them. The helpless fall before their power. They say in their heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face away. He will never see it. Arise, O Lord God, and lift up your hand. Forget not the poor. Why should the wicked be scornful of God? Why should they say in their hearts, you will not avenge it? Surely you behold trouble and misery. You see it and take it into your own hand. The helpless commit themselves to you, for you are the helper of the orphan. Break the power of the wicked and malicious. Search out their wickedness until you find none. The Lord shall reign for ever and ever. The nations shall perish from his land. Lord, you will hear the desire of the poor. You will incline your ear to the fullness of their heart. Give justice to the orphan and oppressed, so that people are no longer driven in terror from the land. Glory to the Father and to the Son as the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Scrolling past our first reading to a song of the Holy City, turning back in our books to evening prayer on Tuesday for the canticle, A Song of the Holy City. I saw the Holy City coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the Holy City, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And the one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. Our first Bible reading is first from First Kings, uh, chapter one. Can't quite um, make it out. Okay, so um, if you're following electronically, it's fine. It's provided for you immediately before the canticle we've just read. Um, but there's a selection of verses from First Kings. Uh, so it's the first book of Kings. So if you turn to back to quarter of the way into your Hebrew Bible. Um, so if, we're sort of, if we've got a Holy Bible, both covenants in a quarter of the way in, um, you should be in the history section. We're looking at the first book of Kings. Um, we've been reading Second Samuel, so I guess it follows on from that. We're reading the first book of Kings. Within the first book of Kings, large number one in the paragraph, head, the paragraph heading uh, in the margin, we have number one. So chapter one in the first book of Kings. All good so far. Then we're starting at verse 32. So the small numbers in the text are the verse numbers. We're starting at verse 32 in the first chapter of the first book of Kings. Then we're going on to the fourth verse in the second chapter, and then jumping six verses. I'm not quite sure why they didn't just go straight on. It made life much easier. Uh, reading from verse 10 to 12 in chapter 2. 1 Kings 1 from 32, uh, going on to verse 4 in chapter 2, then starting again at verse 12, 10 for two verses. King David said, Summon to me the priest Zadok, the prophet Nathan, and Benaiah, son of Jehoiada. When they came before the king, the king said to them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and have my son Solomon ride on my own mule. Bring him down to Gihon. There let the priest Zadok and the prophet Nathan anoint him king over his reign. Then blow the trumpet and say, Long live King Solomon. And you shall go up following him. Let him enter and sit on my throne. He shall be king in my place, for I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, answered the king, Amen, may the Lord, the God of my Lord, the king, so ordain. So the Lord has been with my Lord, the king, as the Lord has been with my Lord, the king, so may he be with Solomon, and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. 
So the priest Zadok, the prophet Nathan, and Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, and the Kerathites, the Pelethites, went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule, and led him to Gihon. There the priest Zadok took the horn of oil from the tent and anointed Solomon. They blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up following him, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth quaked at their noise. Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they finished feasting. When Job heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, Why is the city in an uproar? While he was still speaking, Jonathan, son of the priest Abiathar, arrived. Adonijah said, Come in, for you are a worthy man, and surely you bring good news. Jonathan answered, Adonijah, know for our Lord King David has made Solomon king. The king has sent with him the priest Zadok, prophet Nathan, and Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, and the Kerathites, the Pelethites. They had him ride on the king's mule. The priest Zadok and prophet Nathan have anointed him king at Gihon. And they have gone up from there rejoicing, so that the city, so that the city is in an uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. Solomon now sits on the royal throne. Moreover, the king's servants came to congratulate our Lord King David, saying, May God make the name of Solomon more famous than yours, and make his throne greater than your throne. The king bowed in worship on the bed and went on to pray thus, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who today has granted one of my offspring to sit on my throne and permitted me to witness it. Then all the guests of Adonijah got up trembling and went their own ways. Adonijah, fearing Solomon, got up and went to grasp the horns of the altar. Solomon was informed, Adonijah is afraid of King Solomon. See, he has laid hold of the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear to me first that he will not kill his servant with the sword. So Solomon responded, If he proves to be a worthy man, not one of his hairs shall fall to the ground, but if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. Then King Solomon sent to have him brought down from the altar. He came to the obeisance of King Solomon, and Solomon said to him, Go home. When David's time to die drew near, he charged his son Solomon, saying, I am about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong, be courageous, and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, so that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Then the Lord will establish his word that he spoke concerning me. If your heirs take heed to their way to walk before me in faithfulness with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail you a successor on the throne of Israel. Then David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was forty years. He reigned for seven years in Hebron and thirty-three years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. <clears throat> so I guess if we'd started at 1 Kings 1 1, um, we'd have had the a uh, bit more background to Adonijah. Whereas as it is, we have to pick up as we go along. So uh, David we imagine at the beginning is dying because he asks his um, priest and prophet to take his son and make him king. So they go and do that. Um, we are then told that everybody, a um, couple of tribes go with him. I don't know whether they're foreigners, the Kelethites, the Pelethites, I guess they are. So he's basically got a ready army and uh, the people are really excited and they raise a great cry when they hear that Solomon is king. Um, when Adonijah and his guests are told about it, he runs to the um, altar in the temple to seek sanctuary, which suggests, if we haven't read the first few verses of the chapter, that he was plotting some sort of attempt to overthrow or wrest power from David, who's getting on a bit. Um, and uh, he then appeals to Clement to Solomon for clemency and receives it. And then we're told but uh, all the rest who were with him just sort of disappear um, back to their houses, and then David dies, and Solomon's throne is established. So we have, despite the possible wobble of Adonijah's um, attempt, coup attempt, um, the mantle of power is passed from father to son. It made me smile as I was reading this business about being strong and courageous, keeping the charge of the Lord, because Solomon is the second son of David. Uh, and Bathsheba, David, if you may remember, should have been at war leading his people, but was at home while they were at war. Um, he sees this woman washing, he fancies her, um, summons her and uh, presumably rapes her, um, has a child that dies. Um, meanwhile, he has summoned her husband back from the front. Her husband, being so honourable, won't go and visit her, so it can't be said that it might have been his child. So he sends uh, him to the front line and has him killed. Uh, and this is the second child of uh, that, I can't really call it a relationship, but that sort of sexual slavery, which is not really a good start, which I guess can show us that God can make good things out of bad things, life out of death, light out of darkness, and all that water out of deserts. 
Acts 13 from 44, then our second Bible reading. We scroll onto it if we're following electronically. In Holy Bible, with both covenants, two-thirds of the way through. You, uh, if you open two-thirds of the way through, that's the division between the Hebrew and the Greek scriptures. Move towards the end or the back of the book. And uh, after the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, you'll find the book of Acts, also known as the second Gospel of Luke. We're starting at chapter 13, verse 44. So 13 is the large number in the margin, the chapter head number. Acts chapter 13, and the small numbers of the text are the verses. We're going from verse 44 through to the seventh verse in the chapter following. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city of Antioch gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowd, they were filled with jealousy and blaspheming, and they contradicted what was spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you, since you reject it and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life. We are now turning to the Gentiles, for so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light for the Gentiles, so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and praised the word of the Lord, and as many as had been destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city and stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their region. So they took, shook the dust off their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium, and their disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the same thing occurred in Iconium, where Paul and Barnabas went to the Jewish synagogues and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks became believers. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So they remained for a long time speaking boldly for the Lord, who testified to the word by, of his grace by granting signs and wonders to be done through them. But the residents of the city were divided, some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. And when an attempt was made by, by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to maltreat them and to stone them, the apostles learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derby, cities of Lycaonia, and to the surrounding country, and there they continued proclaiming good news. So we've got uh, Antioch, we've got um, Iconium. Paul and Barnabas turn up, they first start talking to the Jews, some believe, some don't. They then decide to go and talk to the Gentiles, some believe, some don't. And then we are told that the Jews inside of the devout women. So that's not all Jews, it's a bunch of people, I guess, who are, as it's suggested there, filled with jealousy and blaspheming. <coughs> And the same thing happens at Iconium. <clears throat> uh, we're told unbelieving Jews, and that's kind of where Paul was, um, if you think about it. It's basically antagonistic people. Uh, I don't we need to put too much store by um, the fact that they were Jewish, but any people um, who find their power base undermined by a new thought, new idea, think of uh, Jeremy Corbyn and his... Um, relentless persecution he was being relentlessly persecuted um, as leader of the Labour Party the party grew hugely in popularity and uh, in income because people I think felt there was somebody there who could challenge the authorities and then his own party removed him and uh, then took right of centre stage uh, more right wing than the Conservative Party was until the last 10 years I suppose um, so it seems to me that's what it's all about. We should focus more on the human condition and people feeling their power base threatened rather than particularly their religion. So that's the more important thing, although, of course, here, um, the way Christianity then was a branch of Judaism. And so the, it is the Jews, it is the Hebrew people who would be most offended and are most put out, therefore most vociferous. But we mustn't think that this is a, a church versus Jewish um, contention. To the response we back in more, uh, evening prayer on Tuesday in ordinary time. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. The Song of Mary. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones, 
and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three, we come to you at the end of this day and we thank you for all that you have done for us and through us, where we've been inspired and encouraged by the people we are because of what you've done. And uh, we look back on those moments of uh, where people have been grateful to us, where we've been grateful to others, where we've had good conversations, where um, we've seen eye to eye when we've made progress, the jobs and tasks set before us, when we've fulfilled to our own satisfaction those things that we've uh, been planning. And we thank you for opportunities to rest, be creative. And where we've seen you at work in our lives today. It might not have been the case. We might have had a day of challenge and difficulty, living with chronic pain. People might have been unkind to us. We might even have been unkind to ourselves. Our voices might have brought us down. We might be living with addiction. <clears throat> we might be Libyan or Moroccan, overwhelmed by uh, acts of God, earthquakes, flooding. People of Ukraine, bombed, brutalised. And so we pray for your healing, your restoration, your provision, protection that we might face another day. Release international prayers for Vietnam today. We pray for the many believers there whose lives are threatened and endangered for following Jesus. Turning to Christian aid, scrolling through to today's entry in their prayer diary. We pray for people advancing solidarity and cooperation between communities and countries. The Joint Public Issues Team prayer for Ukraine includes the lines, God of all with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. And uh, I would pray that you would um, contain the circumstance of uh, the North Korean and the Russian leadership meeting. Um, I just pray that that doesn't add fuel to the fire. Suffolk Dice's prayer diary invites us to pray for Jenny, who is lead clergy person at Wickham Market with Pettis Tree. Pray for those that work with her, as ordained uh, and lay, house for duty, permission to officiate, commissioned, also their treasurer, wardens and secretaries, others on the PCCs, electoral roll, congregations, communities. May they be inspired by the joy and hope that churches stand for, having been through all they have, looking to the future. Please bless them with uh, fruitfulness. And uh, we pray to chaplains, to seafarers, Port of Felix Day, and uh, Herbert, I don't know whether that is the lead person in relation to chaplaincy, to seafarers. Um, maybe they are the person there, but uh, we pray a blessing on them as they reach out to those almost literally um, landless, by definition, uh, travelling, if not refugees, often treated very poorly by their the other staff, by the boat owning company. So we thank you for that opportunity to provide um, support, the listening ear, advocacy and the like. And we pray for all who are recovering from wildfires in southern Europe this summer. They should rely on tourism industry in those regions that they will be able to continue to make a living.
Pray for the people and businesses in our town of Halesworth, associated with the addresses of Halesworth Road, Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Halton Road. People living there for whom life is a challenge, we ask that you will hear their prayer and that they will be able to be persistent until they receive the help they need. Pray for those where life is going well. May they turn to you with thanksgiving and be supportive of their neighbours. Pray for businesses based on all serving those addresses, that they will thrive and prosper. Uh, understand that accommodation is going to be replacing the um, King Garage. Sorry to see that go. Pray that others will not go in that same direction. We thank you for our retail, hospitality people in and around the town. We pray blessings on their decisions, on their income. They will continue to thrive and contribute. We pray for Moira and Felicity, Peter, Ron, Paul, Cynthia, Janet, Francis, Jean, Valerie, Joan, Lynn, Linda, Carol, Graham, Liz, Anna, Richard, Margaret, Sheila, Ginny, Adrian, John, others we may know for whom life is a challenge at the moment. We pray that you break through in sovereign grace, even if their financial, health, relationship, work, accommodation situation is not redeemable. We pray that your presence with them will give them the security and hope to see them through even their final hours. We thank you for all that's good in the lives of John and Eileen, Eric, Priest, Sylvia and Raymond, Evelyn, Kenneth, Pat, Rhoda and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, and those that have taken their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who are totally faithfully here and all whose ears mind falls at this time. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances, that we will hear your incarnate voice speaking your inspired word by the breath of your spirit, that that will bring light in our darkness and order in our chaos. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.